Hi there and welcome to Woodwork Journey. I'm Dean and there's a gazillion ways of making dowels. However, here's a cheap, practical and quick way that I've found of making one that doesn't require any metal work or anything overly troublesome. And I'm going to use, once the bit of wood is squared up, I'm going to use a saw to do what I need to do to enable me to make dowels like this, which uh, do a grand job. Don't know if that any of that was in focus, but dowels like that. Let's get into it. This came from a bunch, this has got some uh, a thingy finish on it, um, but this came from a bunch of kitchen doors that I got cheap um, earlier in the, in the year. And I sliced them all down and it's, it's not, I don't think it's walnut unless it's really kind of the, 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 the sap kind of nonsense of walnut, but I don't know what it is, but it's a hardwood. It's, uh, it's quite solid. And so I'm going to use this. I was going to use some um, some maple and some walnut, but then I figured that a lot of people would complain about using that sort of stuff. So this is just a bit of kitchen door, albeit some solid solid wood. So I've just cut the sides of that off already, and what I'm going to do is just trim it up a little bit more, and then we can uh, we can get to it. But this should be a super simple and super quick project. And I'll tell you what I'm going to try and do as well: use this. A little bit more, although I am going to have to use the table saw right now. Okay, so right now we've got a uh, just a square. I've got completely arbitrary measurements, so you can do it however you want. It's not specific at all, but I do have this finish that I've got to get off either side. So I'll get the old new sander out, and I've got some new sanding discs that I will uh, I will try, and uh, let's crack into this. I bought these from Ebrasives Limited. That's a good one, and we've got these Smurdex discs, and I've gone for a mixed box. And there's a whole bunch of different uh, variants in this one. So these are all mesh, but we've got 240, as you can see there. And then it should go all the way down to like 80 or 100. 100. There we go. Right there. So, yeah, I've got a fair few to choose from. And uh, we'll go with the hundreds to start with. Let's see how we get on, shall we? Okay, so I gave myself a slight little boo-boo, but that sander, oh, there's blood all the way over there, um, that sander managed to go through this so, so quickly, so quickly with that 80 grit Smurdex stuff. That was ridiculous. That's quite thick coating, that was. Anyway, let's get, uh, let's get to it, shall we? I'm just marking in the middle. Again, this doesn't have to be precise. It can be whatever you want it to be. Draw a line down there. I'm drawing in red pen so it's easier for you guys to see. And then I just want the three sizes. So I'm going to do every, uh, every inch, I think. Now, I'm leaving a little bit of space at the top. I'll go for an inch from the top there. Um, and the only reason I'm doing that is just because there'll be some meat at the top there for things to grab onto. So one, two, three, lovely old job. Now we need to get those drilled. Okay, so when it comes to drill bit sizes, I'm going 10 millimeter. I mean, you can, again, you can do whatever you want, but I'm going to go 10, I'm going to go eight, and I'm going to go six. So there we go. 
Um, we'll do the biggest one at the bottom, I think. So let's just crack into it. I'll put a bit of scrap board on here. You could do this in a pillar drill. You could do this however you fancy. It's not really that important. It's nice if they're straight, but it's not, it's not essential. So there's a reason why I am doing them in a line. So most of this can be very haphazard. But the reason for doing this in a line is because we're going to draw outside lines on the outside of that. Let me show you what I mean. They're not the most evenly spaced out, but they'll do. So what we need to do is we need to do a line where it's sort of kissing all three of them. You see that? So it's very, very close, if not touching the side. So the pen goes into just the edge of all three. And the same on that side as well. So it's very, very close. We don't want to sort of interrupt the, the shape too much, but we do need this to be very, very close. Literally the most accurate thing I've ever done. That's all we need to worry about. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fit the blades in like so. So they're going to sit just on the outskirts of those um, thingies. Right, let's get to cutting and we'll get the handsaw going for this. One of the things you do need to do is figure out the width of your blade or how thick your blade is. Now I'm using one of these Bosch T1440s and if I get my old verniers out, we pop them on there, that comes through at about 1.29. I don't know if that's going to come on camera. I can't turn over any more than that, but 1.28, 1.29. Now then, when I use the kerf of this particular saw, that is 1.3. So again, don't know if you can see that 1.03, 1.04, something like that. So it's going to be close enough for me to be able to get the, the blade into the wood and then give it a bit of a knock and it should sit in there nice and solidly. We want the size hole that we make to be slightly smaller than the size of the, uh, of the blade. Right, you could, I guess, use the side of the clamp as a, as a rail for guiding the saw, but, uh, but I'm not going to do that today. Let us see if we can get this where we want it. I'm just putting more pressure on this back end to start with, whilst trying to make sure the saw hovers over the line. Hi, just a quick one from Editing Dean. Yes, I'm in uh, in bed at the moment because I'm a little bit sore. But Editing Dean wanted to tell you that I didn't cut my lines to the outside or I didn't use the saw blade to the outside of the lines that I drew. That means that the dowels are, are, have ever so slightly turned out to be smaller than I would have liked, but only a, only a small, tiny amount. But cut to the outside of the line that you've drawn, not on the line because the curve of the blade will start encroaching onto the size of the uh, of the dowels that you're going to make. Just wanted to share that. Right, let's get back to it. And then we'll go on that front edge a little bit. Okay, so that's what we've got going on right about there. So now I'm just going to clean this front up a little bit with the sander. I'm going to use 180 grit this time. Righty ho, so that's cleaned up that puppy. Now Let's get a couple of blades and see if this works. Now, the one thing I will say is when you're lining up these blades, look and see the rotation of the drill. Now, in my case, if I put that in that hole and the drill goes clockwise, then the blade will be carving the way I want it to be carving. If it was going anti-clockwise, then that'd make a different kettle of fish. Now, jigsaw blades are made in such a way that they cut on the up and down stroke, I believe. But uh, I like to go against the uh, against the business. So I'm going to pop it that way. And I'm also trying to make sure that the holes aren't in any particular gap in between the uh, in between the 
the teeth. So make sure we've got a decent coverage. Like so. There you go. You might just about see that they are just poking out the top. Okay, let's see how it works before we put finish on it. Before we really get going, I'm just going to use this square piece of, of wood. You do want to make it kind of relatively square because this has got to fit in your drill. But in order to make that happen, we're just going to carve off just a little bit of the wood just with a knife or you could use a plane or a sander or anything you want. But you're just trying to get this to fit inside the mouth of your drill or the chuck of your drill. And then right on the end on this one, we just want a little bit of a point just to give us a little bit of a, a focus on the other end. Nice and solid. Now you don't want to go, um, you don't want to cut these edges off, by the way, to get this minimal um, with a bandsaw because a harsh sort of right angle cut there will be a weak point and it will break. Um, but, uh, but yeah, hopefully that will be okay. Let's get this in the vise. And then we're going to try and get the point of what we've just carved into the, uh, into the front there. And then simply just go for it like that. And that is the kind of quality that we come up with. And I can uh, wang a bit of sandpaper over that if I want to and that'll make it even nicer. And there you go. That is your dowels ready to be cut up. You don't want to get these too shiny and smooth because they'll uh, grip onto, uh, grip onto to glue better when they're a bit matte, you know? And what I'll do is I'm going to stick a bit of uh, Keats oil, uh, original oil and wax finish. He has got some nice clear stuff going these days, so if you're looking to treat yourself to something for Christmas, pop over to uh, Rag and Bone Brown's channel, check out his Etsy page. Now, you do want to be careful when you're doing this that you don't obviously, you know, get the, uh, get the sharp bits. And there you have it. That's that. That is my super easy dowel maker. Even I can make it without cocking up. I'll put the finish on properly in a minute. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, even I can make it without cocking up. Now, a couple of options you do have. If you, um, the, the, the kerf that you, uh, you, you saw out for whatever you use is too thick for the blades, what you can always do is pop the blades in and then put uh, a piece of wood maybe along the bottom there and along the top and screw that in just to hold the blades down so they don't go flying. You do want to make sure that those blades are solid. I imagine there's a possibility of being able to use epoxy to get them in there as well. But uh, but no, otherwise that's a fairly straightforward way of making dowels. So that's it. That is the super easy, quick dowel maker that makes pretty decent dowels. As long as you don't invade the holes too much when it comes to the, um, the, 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 the blade closeness to the holes. Does that make sense? As long as you don't interrupt that too much, then you should, in theory, be able just to drill a hole, bang it in there, and jobs are good. And that is what it's all about. Thanks very much for watching. I've been Dean. This has been Woodwork Journey. If you liked the video or you found it useful, then please do give it a thumbs up and uh, make, your make sure you subscribe for the next one. Thanks very much. See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>